Hello again. The thumbnail to this video shows a black merchant seaman called Charles Wattam, who drowned in Liverpool in the summer of 1919. A gravestone has recently been erected to commemorate his death, as it is alleged that he was the victim of a lynching. Needless to say, the BBC has been all over the story, relating a shockingly untruthful version of the man's death to those chumps who are foolish enough to believe anything they are told, as long as it concerns a poor innocent black man. According to the BBC, and I give a link to the news item about this in the description to this video it's from their website, I quote, a sailor who died after he was pursued by a white mob in one of the UK's worst outbreaks of racist violence is to have a permanent headstone on his grave. Charles Wattam died in Liverpool in 1919 and was buried in a pauper's grave. The headstone will be officially unveiled at a ceremony in Anfield Cemetery. It is the first of several memorials marking the contributions of black people to the city. On the evening of the 5th of June, police raided a boarding house in Upper Pitt Street, home to mainly Caribbean and West African seafarers. Mr. Watton, a Bermudan ship's fireman, escaped the house and fled towards the docks, chased by the police and the mob. It's not clear exactly what happened, but he somehow ended up in the dock. He tried to swim away while the mob pelted him with bricks and stones, but he soon drowned. A tragic tale indeed. And yet, no mention of the three police officers who were shot, or the others that were beaten unconscious, or the man slashed with a razor. What's that you say? Is there more to the case than just a poor helpless black man being chased by a lynch mob of white racists? Well, you bet your life there is. This is an absolutely classic case of fake black history, which makes even the story of Mary Seacole look quite sensible in comparison. A few years ago, a book of mine called 1919, Britain's Year of Revolution, was published. This detailed, among other things, the dreadful riots which took place all over the country in the summer of 1919, some of which involved friction between black people and white, but most of which did not. Let me read out what I wrote about the case. It's from the book. Where are we? Have patience, please. On the Wednesday, 4th of June, 1919, a scuffle between a black dock worker and a white man in Liverpool escalated into a riot in which blacks and whites fought each other in the streets with knives, razors and revolvers. The case, as Bell I could scarcely have been more trivial, a black man in a public house was asked for a cigarette and assaulted when he refused. The following day, he and some friends returned to the pub seeking revenge. What began as a fist fight soon spilled out onto the street and escalated into the use of razors and knives. A policeman who tried to intervene was knocked unconscious. Police reinforcements arrived and the black sailors retreated into a lodging house. Things then became extremely serious. As the police approached the house where the black sailors were, a crowd of white men gathered, expressing their anger against the black sailors in the house. It was at this point that shooting erupted, with the men in the house firing down at the police as they tried to gain access. Police Sergeant Getty was shot in the neck. Another officer, Constable Brown, received a bullet wound to his mouth. The gunfire infuriated the crowd, and when one of the black men, 24-year-old ship's fireman Charles Wooden, ran from the lodging house in an attempt to escape, the police quickly caught him. A rumour went round the crowd of white men, which now numbered several hundred, that the man the police had detained was one of those who had been firing at them. Wooden was wrestled away from the two police officers who had hold of him, and either jumped or was thrown into the harbour, where, unable to swim, he drowned. Hmm. And now let me read out the statement of PC Thomas Brown, which he made at a subsequent court hearing. 
One of the coloured men struck a constable on the shoulder with a stick and broke the stick in so doing. I ran towards a coloured man who had thus used his stick, whereupon another coloured man molested me with a revolver, which he drew from his right-hand pocket. I turned on him and with my baton struck his right wrist so that he let the revolver drop, but catching the weapon in his left hand he aimed at my chest and fired. The bullet struck me under the lower lip, knocked out three of my teeth and entered my neck at the side of the spinal cord. I fell to the ground bleeding profusely but did not lose consciousness. A girl in the crowd tore off part of her skirt and put it into my mouth, thus materially checking the flow of blood. Everything was very confused. At least two people, two black men, were firing at the police, uh, in addition to those with knives and razors, that is. No mention at all of this by the BBC, or those wishing to commemorate the contribution made by the black people to Liverpool's history, you will observe. People sometimes complain that I am always going on about matters relating to black people. But with lies and deception such as this now becoming an everyday occurrence, I think that I can hardly be blamed for drawing attention to the systematic falsification of British history. I give links to a few newspaper articles, also in the description to this video, which uh, makes mention of the shooting. Not a word of it in anything else, any other news item about Charles Wotton, about his new gravestone, not a word about shooting or anything else. Shocking. 